Hey everybody, thanks for joining Altium Academy. I am Zach Peterson, I'm your technical consultant with Altium, and today we're gonna to talk about routing into vias and more specifically, how you should size the pads on your vias. Now, this is actually really important because it's a manufacturability issue as well as a reliability issue, and it's something I think a lot of designers overlook. Sometimes designers just pick a default pad size and they just use it throughout the design. If the pad size you happen to pick is large enough, you won't have any problems. If the pad size is too small, you could have a fabrication problem that leads to a reliability problem. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's go ahead and get started. When you're getting ready to route your traces and you wanna pick a via size that's gonna be used to go from different layers in your board, what should that be via size be? There's a few different ways to approach this problem. And you kind of have to balance manufacturability with the cost that, that you're trying to hit, as well as the pitch on the component. There's a number of different factors to consider. And one thing that I like to do is I like to try and just keep a consistent pad size above the whole size. And then you can use that to size out the rest of your vias. So I'll show you what I mean. If you remember our earlier video on PCB manufacturing, one thing that we talked about was the via hole size and specifically the drill size, meaning the size of the hole that they have to drill, which will then be plated up with copper to form your finished drill hole. As this drill size goes down, what happens to your cost? Well, your cost generally goes up, and that's because when you get to a smaller drill bit, those bits fracture more often, they can't take as many drill hits before they fracture, and so they have to be replaced more often, Obviously that means the costs go up because they pass that cost onto you, the customer. Totally reasonable, right? One thing that you can do is you can pick a minimum drill size that you wanna use. One thing that is, or one drill size, I should say that's, uh, or hole size that's generally gonna be useful for most PCBs is gonna be a minimum of a 10 mil hole size on vias. So specifically, when you have a trace, you're routing into a via, and then you have some pad around it, this diameter would then be 10 mils. So this is gonna be good for most boards and there's a few reasons for this. So first of all, obviously manufacturing. Manufacturing is an important consideration because once you take, let's say a board that has you know 200 drill holes in it and you go from 10 mil to eight mil, it's actually gonna increase your costs. Now for a single board, it might not matter so much, but let's say you have you know a thousand boards that actually does become a significant number and it's something that you need to think about as you go to a smaller drill hole size. The other issue that you might wanna think about here in this case is not just the cost, but also the aspect ratio. So this is also very important for the drill hole size. So here with a 10 mil drill hole and a 62 mil thick board, uh, we basically have a six to one or 6.2 to one uh, aspect ratio on these drill holes. So those are gonna be nice and reliable. This is gonna be very easy to plate just using a pulsed plating technique. And it's gonna plate up very nicely throughout the entire uh, length of the barrel. And you shouldn't have any problems in terms of thermal cycling as long as this pad size is large enough. The pad size is important for uh, thermal cycling and for reliability in that sense. But there's actually another important sense where you need to consider what the pad size should be. So the first is in terms of the trace width. The second is in terms of actually the fabrication capabilities of your fabricator. Okay, so now what I wanna do is kind of compare a top view of a trace going into a via, and then I wanna compare the side view, because the side view and the top view kind of correspond to each other here. So basically, this is kind of my layer stack from the side, this is my trace from the top. And so now the question is, just based on manufacturability, what does this big width W need to be for the entire pad? So we can actually size this based on the diameter of the hole, and then a few other factors that are related to fabrication capabilities, and then uh, the reliability that we need to hit. and. This whole diameter is gonna be chosen generally to be based on the, the factors that I discussed earlier, whether it's manufacturing limits that you're trying to hit, maybe it's pad pitch, maybe it's just the cost that you wanna hit, whatever it may be. You've chosen this diameter, we'll call it D. So what happens when this hole actually gets fabricated is that this hole where we would like the drill to hit, that's not where the drill actually hits. All drills have some wander, okay, so remember, PCBs are etched and then they're drilled 
and they're drilled with a computer numerically controlled drilling apparatus. Instead of hitting right here, dead center in this hole where we would like it to be, what could actually happen is the drill hole could hit out here, or maybe it's out here. You know, somewhere like in here. Or maybe it's just totally off the pad altogether if you're really off, okay? Now, one way to size your pads is to accommodate for this drill wander. And so what that does is that ensures that no matter where this drill is most likely to hit, you're always gonna have a reliable electrical connection here. So this is actually defined in two IPC standards, okay? So those are IPC 2221, and then IPC 6012. Now, 6012 is derived from 2221. 6012 applies to rigid boards. There are other standards that are related to different kinds of circuit boards. So, for example, there's one for high speed boards or high frequency boards that require impedance control, maybe on PTFE based laminates. And there's another related 60XX standard for HDI boards, so on and so forth. There's one for like rigid flex and flex boards. So, there are different standards that cover this same type of analysis analogous issue in those other types of boards, okay? So I think it's kind of important for most designers to have like a bare bones understanding of some of the points in IPC standards. This is actually one of those. So this is actually related to a reviewer question that we, that we got. And the viewer question was essentially asking, what is the formula for this specific pad diameter? And the answer is that there is one, but there kind of isn't one. What there is, is there's a limit that's specified in the 6012 standards. And that limit is based on this distance right here between where the actual drill hit ends up and the edge of the pad. Now, this distance right here is called the annular ring. Some designers or some design guides will call this pad the annular ring, meaning like this distance right here, the annular ring. That's actually not correct. This distance is only the annular ring when the drill hit is exactly dead center in the pad. And again, that doesn't happen in reality. It's always gonna be just a little bit off. And if you look at some actual circuit boards under a microscope, you'll be able to find vias where this is actually off significantly and it's a bit closer to the edge than it is in the actual center of the pad. So now, what is this limit that it sets? So there is a very simple formula that you can use, and it's based on the minimum limit for this annular ring as specified in these standards. So that formula is this width, uh, I'll write it down here, is W is equal to A plus 2B plus C. And this is actually how it's written in the, uh, the IPC standards. So what are each of the things inside of this formula? Well, W is the minimum land size, okay? So it's meaning it's the minimum diameter of this pad. A is the diameter of the hole. So here we have A in this formula is equal to this guy, D. Next, what is B? Well, B is specified as this distance right here, this minimum distance that they allow. So for an external supported hole, meaning like an external uh, via, meaning on the top or bottom layer, where we have the plating extending all the way around the edge of the hole, this distance right here would be B equals basically two mil. So that's for IPC class three products. And IPC class three are the highest reliability products next to class 3A, which is then like mill aero, life-saving medical equipment, all sorts of other stuff that is extremely high reliability. But for generic electronics that still need to have perpetual uptime, IPC class three is the highest reliability class. They specify two mil along this distance. Now for the uh, internal layer, let's say we have an internal layer here, this, pad on the inside of an internal layer, here, this distance B is going to be one mil, okay? So this is the minimum annular ring that you can have on an internal layer. So it's different for external versus internal layers. We have A, that's our diameter of our finished hole. We have B, that's again, de depends if you're talking about internal or external layers. And then we have C, so what is C? C is based on the fabrication tightness or the fabrication allowance. And essentially it's related to how much wander does your fabricator allow 
their drilling machine to have when they're placing these drill hits in these pads. So there are three different levels of producibility associated with C. So I'm gonna actually show you in the IPC standards what those numbers are, and then I'll give you a little bit of guidance on how to actually size these vias. So what I'm looking at now is table 9.1 and table 9.2 in the IPC 2221 standard. So this is kind of gonna be your base standard for, uh, for printed circuit board design guidelines. What this, uh, is showing you is these are your values for C in the equation that I was showing earlier, in the A plus 2B plus C uh, equation. So if we go just to the previous page, you will see right here the minimum land size, A plus 2B plus C, and then they actually define these different things here in this, uh, this next paragraph. Here for C, the values for C are gonna be right here. Okay, so they're telling you exactly what they need to be. Here for level C, this is generally the highest level of producibility, uh, meaning it's the hardest to reproduce. And this is generally what fabricators aim for, okay? So if your fabricator was only operating at level A, C would have to be a larger value, meaning that they have looser tolerances. So they are more likely to create a defect as defined within this standard when they're drilling the hole, meaning it could be off the pad or it could be uh, essentially uh, uh, breaking the trace connection to the pad. And so there are some examples to this. So I'll explain figure 9.1 here in just a moment. But going back here to this table, we can actually use this to kind of create a little example of what we need our pad size to be in order to meet uh, like a class three requirement or a class two requirement. So let's just say for a moment, uh, I wanna figure out the minimum land size for a finished hole size of let's say eight mil, okay? So I say finished hole size because if you look at here in A, this is gonna be the maximum diameter of the finished hole, okay? So if the finished hole is let's say eight mils and we wanna design to class three, we'd have B equals two mils as defined down here in table 9.2 for an externally supported hole. So two times two mils gives us four mils, plus this eight mils here for C. And so we have eight plus eight plus four, and that gives us 20 mils. I know that's a, a little bit of info to digest, but again, you have all the values here that you need to figure out your minimum land size. Okay, so our finished hole was eight mils, and our, uh, our pad size needed to be at least uh, 20 mils. So that's everything that we need to size our vias to hit a class three requirement. Now you'll notice here under 2221 uh, that uh, we have class one, class two, and class three all kind of lumped together. This requirement is actually relaxed a little bit when you look at 6012. So IPC 6012 relaxes this and allows for something called breakout. And breakout is defined here in this next PDF I'm gonna pull up right now. Okay, so here's what we're looking at in uh, the 6012 standards. Specifically, we're looking at what happens here with annular rings under IPC 6012. So uh, you'll notice here for class three, we have the same requirements that we had uh, for our uh, under uh, IPC 2221. We now have a different requirement, which is called 90 degree breakout. And so I'll explain what breakout is in just a moment. But essentially this allows the drill hit to come off of the pad just a little bit and it makes this pattern called a 90 degree break, breakout. Here for class one, you can have even more of an allowance. It can go up to 180 degree breakout. So again, I'll show what that looks like here in just a moment. But one of the things that you can do uh, to prevent uh, breakout uh, and to uh, ensure even greater reliability is if you go back to the 2221 standards, and you look up here, in figure 9.1, you can actually add a little bit of copper to your land shape in order to ensure that there's always gonna be some additional copper above the minimum annular ring size, and it's really gonna ensure that you have maximum reliability. Okay, so corner entry is kind of one way to do it. I think that's kind of the cheater's way to do it, and um, you can still have a problem with reliability here because you might have this break out of the pad. Keyholing, uh, 
uh, yeah, you can do it, but it's kind of pointless. Really, the standard way to do this is to just do filleting. This, this structure is actually called a teardrop here. So the teardrop is kind of the standard structure that you would use to ensure maximum reliability. And you can actually apply this really easily in Altium Designer. So we'll show uh, in an upcoming video how you can actually do this really quick and easy and just apply those to every net on your board if you want to. Okay, so real quick, what I'm gonna do is just show you what breakout looked like. Here, let's just say this is our pad and we would like to have the drill hit right here, obviously in the center, and that's where we are aiming our drill. Now, what can actually happen is the drill might hit over here, and let's say that this is the center of our drill hit, and you know, our drill hole actually looks like this. What happens is that this forms some angle here. We'll call this angle theta. This angle from the center right here to these points where the pad and the edge of the drill hit intersect, this angle is the breakout angle. Under class two, theta has to be less than 90 degrees. For uh, class one, theta has to be less than 180 degrees. For uh, IPC class three, there is no breakout. No breakout is allowed. So if there's any breakout, and actually if you get this distance less than two mils on an external layer or one mil on an internal layer, then this is gonna be considered a defect your board's gonna be scrapped. This is all kind of a really complex way to say that you should try and figure out what the minimum land size is above what you need for your finished hole and just honestly, just apply that to all of your vias. So we went through an example in the PDF for the IPC standards. I'll have a link to uh, one of the blogs on Altium site that includes a link to that actual standard. You can go download it and you'll have a copy of 2221. You can then use that to start sizing all the pads for your vias. All right, everybody, so I know that this is a ton of information. Like I said, go check out the link in the description. That's gonna link over to a blog that's gonna try and explain a lot of this stuff better than I did in this video, but hopefully you all enjoy this video anyways. If you do, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. We always love getting your questions, and we've had so many questions that honestly, it's been tough to keep up with them. I'm really happy that everybody's enjoying these videos. And uh, definitely on this, don't forget to call your fabricator.